Hello everyone, this is what's here for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord, really a go tell um, video. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. They are true. They are yes and amen. And we receive them from your word. We treasure your word. Your word is a great treasure to us. We delight ourselves in you, God. Love on us. Love on our hearts, God. We surrender everything to you today. Give us rainbow for the hour that we live in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, you guys. So today, um, well, I just got done with the teaching, but the Lord wanted me to also go to Isaiah 42 verses five through seven. We've actually been in Isaiah before, but he just wanted me to re-emphasize verses five through seven with you guys. And remember, some of these are go tell. So they are more on the prophetic side rather than Bible study. And I feel like this is one of those. He has been really giving me a lot of go tells lately. And I really believe it has to do with his return and the closeness of it so he told me to come and talk about verse 5 through 7 of Isaiah 42 so we are going to do that so let's get started verse 5 thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread out the earth and what comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. So this is a beautiful description of the Lord and what he's done for us that the, a lot of the things that we sometimes don't even acknowledge anymore because we see them every day and we need to take time and stop and admire his creation and just say thank you, right? Right. Of all the, the lepers that were cleansed, only one came back to say thank you. But here, God is telling us what he does. He's telling us the, the beauty that's surrounding us comes from him. And our breath, our spirit, our life, it comes from him. It says, thus says the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out. God created the beautiful sky that we see. He created the heavens that we don't see. He created the, the spiritual realm as well as the natural realm, right? And, and these are complex things that we could never understand how detailed he is, right? And we try to, in science, try to figure things out, you know, but thus says the God, the Lord, he created all of these things. And, and there's no way for us to fully dig into them, right? But he created them and he stretched them out. He expanded them. This, this is letting you know that he did it, right? Because there is a, a scientific proof in this that as, you know, we know the the earth not the earth the um universe is expanding right he stretched them out he stretched out the heavens and we know now through all this technology we've learned that you know the universe is constantly expanding it is expanding from a, a certain point and going outward right so if here he can say that long before any technology he's proving to you he's telling you he did it it's him he is the source who spread out the earth and what comes from it he no no not just that he made the earth but that all the seed bearing plants all the beautiful things all of that comes from him. He gives breath to the people in it and spirit to those who walk in it. If you ever thought about the source of all life, it is God, our Lord. And he happens to be a loving God. He happens to, to be your God. If you have confessed him as Lord, thank you, God.
for giving us breath and spirit and life in this beautiful earth and sustaining it and sustaining the heavens because he even sustains the heavens if you have done this revelation study with us you know he is the sustainer of the heavens because when it starts to all fall apart many people are going to realize that you know this is god right because when the stars fall from the sky you'll know whose hand has been holding them up up until that point right so verse six i am the lord i have called you in righteousness i will take you by the hand and keep you i will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations so here specifically god is talking to his chosen ones right so he's not only talking about jesus but he's also talking about us right so we are found in jesus so therefore the promises that are coming forth from jesus we are able to operate in the authority of that so and and here it kind of because you can tell it's not differentiating between the two Jesus is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Messiah. And if we are found in him, we are counted with him. We are counted as having been bought with a price, right? So it says, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness, meaning Jesus. I have called Jesus in righteousness and I have called you in righteousness. How? Because we are found in Christ Jesus. I will take you by the hand and keep you not our own righteousness by the way right this is jesus's righteousness with which we are found to be covered by because we believe on him we believe on the lord so it says i will take you by the hand and keep you god is a keeping god he is a god who who is not going to just stop all of a sudden from from maintaining his promises he is keeping us through Christ Jesus his son he's got his eyes on his son and in and, and in him we are found if we abide in Christ if we walk in the light we are found to be in him it says i will keep you as a covenant for the people wow he is going to keep Jesus as a covenant for the people. Remember, this is a better covenant than the previous covenant. The previous covenant covenant came under the law. The previous covenant did was not about, about grace and mercy, right? It was about keeping the law and following it and then atoning for your sins with, you know, animals and sacrifices, right? And transferring that onto them. But here he says, I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for my people. It puts you in the mind of Isaac being about to be sacrificed on that altar, right? But instead, Jesus has taken his place. Jesus was the true sacrifice. He is the covenant that was given for the people. He was the right sacrifice. He was the only one who can break the scrolls. He is the only one who is worthy, who was found worthy, sinless, sin-free right and who took on our sins and and because of that we are righteous we are found in him we are kept by god because of him i will give you as a covenant for the people thank you jesus a light for the nations jesus is a light right and if we're found in him we're the light too right? Because we're reflecting the light that comes from him. If we are found in him, then we are the light as well. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations. Is God using you? Is he giving you, right? If you're found in Jesus, you've been given up. You've taken up the cross as well. You're walking in the light and you're walking with Christ, Are you a light to the nations when people see you? Is there something different? Do you stand out in a crowd, right? Are your words the same or are they different from the people that surround you on a daily basis? Do you leave people with grace or do you leave them with a burden? Do you leave them with Jesus and hope 
or do you leave them with the same thing that everyone else is in the world leaving leading them with leaving them with God has a call on our lives. He has a purpose for us. He has a plan for us. And we must walk it out while it is still day. Night is coming. I've said this so many times in the last few sessions. Night is coming. Night is coming where no man can work. Right? So do your work while it is still day. Night is coming. No one will be able to work. And when Christ cracks that sky, his reward is going to be with him, right? Thank you, Lord. Verse seven, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. Who could this light be? But Jesus, who could, who could, open the eyes of the blind but you when you're in Christ Jesus right Jesus is the answer he opens the eyes of the blind we can do those miracles as well and greater right because we are in Jesus we can be that light because we're in Jesus reflecting his light to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. How will they see unless you are in place? How will they know what, what the light is or where Jesus is unless you open your mouth and speak? How will they know what to do unless you come and tell them? Go and open the eyes of the blind. Do the miracles. Do the works of Jesus. Live the life that Jesus can say, hey, my light shines in her. My light shines in him. Open the eyes that are blind. Bring out the prisoners from the dungeon. If you see someone in bondage, if you see someone and the Holy Spirit is telling you, okay, now is the time. I want you to do this. I want you to lay hands on them. Then you need to walk forward and walk in Christ. Walk in the light. Reflect your light on that situation. You have miracles stored up inside of you. You have gifts inside of you. Don't be afraid to use them. Don't be afraid to be who God has called you to be. It says to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon. That it takes power to do that. If you're not operating in power, then you're not operating in Christ Jesus. And you need to do what it takes to get in right standing with God, with Christ. And then you can operate in the gifts of his spirit and power, right? He said, these things will you do and greater. It says, from the prison to those who sit in darkness. There are people that are in bondage. There are people that are in darkness. There are people that are imprisoned. And how will they know how to break free unless you come and stand in the position that God has called you into? Do the will of God. Do the works of God. He has a plan for you, specifically for you. Not just your pastor, not just your your girlfriend who is so powerful in the word. No, through you. It may not look like such and such is gift, but he can use you. He can do mighty miracles through you if you're only willing to be found in Christ. If you're only willing to walk in the light and abide and do what the spirit of the Lord is telling you in your heart to do. Night is coming where no man can work. Do work while it is still day, man of God, woman of God. There is time. Do the work while there is still time. 
while we're still under this grace covenant. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, which has held out through time until this day. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we always pray and that we find hope. God, let us abide in Jesus. Let us not just be about words, but help us to be about deeds. Help us to hear your voice and, and, and do what you say. Help us to remember the sick, the orphans, the widows, the blind, those who are in need of you. Help us to address the needs of others that are around us as your spirit leads, not just operating in self, but operating in you and operating in love. Lord, we love you. We give you all the glory, all the honor and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. If you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, repeat these words after me. But more than saying the words, believe these words in your heart. Confess them with your mouth and believe them in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. I am in need of a savior. I have led myself for long enough. Lord, I'm asking you, Jesus, to lead me and guide me. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. I believe you are the Messiah, Jesus, which has come from heaven. You are the son of God. Forgive me of my sins. I confess they are many. Cover them with your blood. I believe your sacrifice is enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and he has sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except for Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his bride. The Holy Spirit is inside of you and he can lead you and guide you into all truth. This means that he's, he's able to counsel you and help you to know which way to go in all your circumstances in life, the small and the great. And he's also going to help you to know where to go to be sharpened with other believers, which is a command that Christ wanted us to do. He wanted us to forsake not the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. He wants us to come together and fellowship together so that we can be sharpened in him. God is a great God. He is doing mighty and miraculous things. He is going to lead you to a church home where you can go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. He has just got a wonderful plan in store for you. Don't be afraid to walk in it. Walk in it while it's still day. Do the work while it's still day. Salvation is free, but Jesus has rewards that are going to be with him. Work for him so that you can have an eternal reward, even beyond that eternal life that he's giving you. Thank you, Lord. And once you have um, found a church home, go and be baptized in the name of Jesus. It is a wonderful thing. It is an outward expression of something God is doing inside of you. Amen. All right, you guys, I have gone on for long enough and I'm praying for you. I hope you all are well. I pray that God makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children, his peace. And I pray a hedge of protection around you and your family and that angelic forces be on guard for you in these last and evil days and that you have sweet sleep as you go to bed tonight. 
Take care and be blessed. I love you all.